wonder, do we need the lines on there? Is no, there? it's there. Yeah, the it's line. okay. We're on now? No, no. We are. We are on line. Are we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just... Where's the music? There you go, sorry. Remember the days of old and consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he shall show thee, thy elders and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up her nest, fluttering over a young, spreadeth abroad her wings, takes them, and bears them upon her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him. So there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Well, friends, welcome to another in the series of The Sweet and Sunny Days. That reading that I've just read to you comes from the book of Deuteronomy 32 and reading from uh, the verse uh, 7 uh, through to verse 14. And uh, tonight, uh, uh, our series, uh, the title of our series, uh, The Blessing of the Lord Makes Rich and Adds No Sorrow With It. And uh, we're following up truly on the life of Jacob, which uh, we take for an example. And what a wonderful example it is of a, of a young person taking their journey. Well, 40 years old he was when he journeyed from uh, his father and mother's house. But uh, you see, in those days, 40 was considered fairly young, friend. And uh, uh, so it was here uh, we have the sweet and sunny days, which is uh, uh, really uh, for those who have a younger heart. Amen. But hey, <laughs> don't we all have a younger heart? Well, my husband no? is 77 years old. <laughs> yes. Isn't uh, he look so young? <laughs> well, I thank the Lord for that. Because, I, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm getting older too. I'm not getting younger. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone, for uh, tuning in tonight. And we praise God for your uh, prayers and Wonderful support. Yes. A big welcome to everyone, and uh, thank you for following on in our new series. We've had so much uh, of uh, very nice uh, responses, and uh, and thanks uh, for the Word of God. And uh, I trust uh, as we go along in this series, uh, uh, it shall be uh, so much of sweet and sunny days. Exactly. Bring well, it on. Your <laughs> comments online, bring it on, and yeah. we will endeavor to answer and uh, respond to each one of you. Amen. And we thank you so much. Well, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, uh, stay with us because, uh, you know, the Word of God is that eternal Word of great salvation which exactly. comes to us through our mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Bernie Woodrow. This is my wife, Joanne, and uh, I will be... Uh, Greetings to you all in Jesus' mighty amen, name. Amen. All right, we'll start off. <laughs> Thank, well. you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in tonight. Well, let's uh, make a start tonight. And uh, as uh, I um, gave, that, uh, which, uh, gave that verse, which comes incidentally from the book of Proverbs, the blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. Mm. Well, you know, we will be contemplating that in this particular message, at least the beginnings of it, right? Because we're following on uh, from last week as we did uh, uh, to give such an example of Jacob, uh, uh, which, whose name is found multiple places in the Bible because, mm -hmm. friends, he is an example of uh, the originals of the Christian faith, along with the patriarchs, 
who we call patriarchs, Jacob, uh, uh, Abraham, which is the first, uh, which we walk in the footsteps of our father Abraham uh, because of he, he is the great example to us and a great uh, example he is of uh, one who walked with God. We come next to Isaac and then passing down to Jacob. They are the major patriarchs of the Old Testament. And so it behoves us very much to know something of the blessing of God because uh, as it is, if I say the blessing of God makes rich, I say the sun is shining upon you, friend. And uh, isn't it something of a hope uh, which is so necessary for our young people today uh, to have hope, right? Uh, to know that that sun is going to come up and uh, shine full and free in your face. And that is happy days to you. Well, of course, the blessing of God makes rich, but also... Uh, it makes no sorrow with it, but as for Jacob, he's going to find out that uh, uh, there are plenty of uh, obstacles uh, that, and troubles uh, uh, that might hinder the blessing of God. But remember, friends, the blessing of God will always triumph over our troubles. You know? And that is a, a great uh, lesson to learn out of this uh, uh, example of uh, Jacob, which we will take up. Uh, this morning. This afternoon. So, this morning. Oh, this afternoon. Yes, I'm getting mixed up now. <laughs> but in fact, it's already um, 10 minutes past six, so yeah. it's evening here. That's right, evening. Well, the blessing of God, friends, what is it? Uh, many today may be now, uh, wondering just what it is the blessing of God, which uh, the Word of God speaks of, and which we observe from the narrative of Jacob. Uh, which was very much treasured so highly. Because in these days in which we're living, uh, when uh, we observe that God, the knowledge of God, is, uh, has been so taken out of the world, so to speak, it, it uh, remains in static in different places amongst the remnant of God's people. Thank God for that. Right, because the, the word of uh, truth shall uh, endure to all generations. That's what the Bible says. It shall, that lamp of truth will never go out, friend. Never, never go out. Whereas other uh, sects, uh, philosophies and everything else will pass by the wayside. But you can be sure uh, that this is the way of truth. The revelation of the only true and, and blessed God. So the blessing of God, what is it? Uh, so highly was it, um, was it um, treated in those days? Uh, and especially um, in the life of the family of Jacob. His father, of course, Isaac, and his mother, Rebekah. Now, Jacob, uh, we didn't uh, cover this last week, but he was the favourite of his mother. Now, Jacob had a brother who was Esau also, who will come up in uh, our readings today. So, so highly was that blessing treasured that Jacob's mother was willing that if the deception she had planned be discovered, then she herself would willingly have laid the blame upon herself and not her son. Now, to uh, know what we're talking about here, you must read it for yourself because it takes a great deal of time, friends, uh, for me to go through that uh, history. But it takes only a little read of perhaps a chapter. Uh, just so Esau, the brother of Jacob, on learning that his brother had deceived their father in uh, obtaining the blessing of God, because that's what happened in that time. Uh, the blessing of God, especially passed down through Abraham to Isaac and then to Jacob. Right? This was, is very important in Scripture because Abraham takes up quite a few chapters in the book of uh, Genesis and for good reason, right? because we all who are Christians follow in the footsteps of Abraham. Right? So the blessing of God. Uh, it was something that uh, uh, was passed down. Uh, 
by God, instituted of God, given to Abraham in the beginning. He was entrusted with the covenant of God and the blessing of God that he might make it known to his sons and to whomsoever came into his house. But particularly, it was handed down in great uh, thoughtfulness to his sons. The blessing of God should inherited uh, was, uh, 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 was something that was really uh, treasured treasured by both Esau, who was a little bit more uh, of, uh, what shall we say, he was a, a, a man of the fields, right? Jacob was a man of the house, right? So he, he stayed at home more uh, around the house. Um, and, and you can read uh, something of that. Um, Esau's character comes out very much in this story, right? Uh, and uh, as we as we read on, we find that that and that uh, uh, passing on of the blessing of God, uh, Jacob and his mother, his mother uh, firstly had planned this, and uh, 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 was instructing his son, her son Jacob, what to do to inherit that blessing, because that blessing should have fallen on Esau, right? But first of all, there was another deception foisted before that, wherein Jacob uh, took away uh, such as uh, the inheritance of his brother. But this blessing was most important. And so um, when Esau learned of it, he was pained at the heart. He was greatly troubled. In fact, the Bible says he cried so much that he had missed that blessing uh, because Jacob had foisted a deception and his mother uh, to foil him in that and to take the blessing of God uh, themselves. Uh, so there was a lot of hatred kindled in his heart, even so much that he had uh, desired when the time would come that he would take his brother's life. Now that, that really tells us that the blessing of God uh, was something uh, uh, really special. And so it, it should be for us, friends the blessing of God upon our life, the smile of God. It talks about the favour of God, right? Uh, uh, that blessing it talks about the very favour of God. And uh, we as sinners need to know that. We need the mercy of God and the grace of God and the favour of God. And how shall it come to us? Well, in this series, I hope to bring that out very much to us. So keep listening. Yes, for all this, the blessing of God would stand upon Jacob, but not without certain troubles which he would inherit also, right, as a result of this. Uh, in fact, the very deceptions that he had foisted upon his father uh, would also, he, would, he would also have to suffer in the future too, uh, because our sins uh, tend to follow on and there are consequences of them also. But do note here that the blessing of God was in, on, uh, was, uh, in provision, uh, meaning uh, it went along with a directive as well in verses 1 and 2. Uh, so now we're looking at uh, uh, turning back from Deuteronomy, we're looking at the book of Genesis now. Um, let's see there. I think it's uh, 25... 28. Here we are, 28. Uh, let's read the first two verses here to give us uh, something uh, of, uh, um, put us in the picture here uh, of where we left off from, yes, from last week. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Paddan Aram to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take there a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, the, thy, brothers, uh, thy mother's brother. Right? So, uh, there was a, a directive here, along with the blessing of God. The blessing of God uh, uh, included inheritance of a land, uh, it uh, um, was so wide and broad, even 
coming down to this day because it involved the seed or the descendants that would inherit that blessing, right? And uh, uh, so much the more. A threefold blessing actually uh, stood there. Uh, but, um, you know, what does this mean when, when Isaac, the father of Jacob, blessed him and charged him? means gave him a directive as well as the blessing. Uh, and there was a consequence of that. That he would not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan because God had not um, permitted that they should do that. Right? They must marry within their own uh, people and clan. Uh, and so um, what does that tell us? Well, it tell us, tells us that we should not engage in any kind of mixture by marriage or in a more general sense, be not yoked together or unequally yoked, as the word says, with unbelievers. Right? Because in the beginning, we must say that God was in the, in the process of setting up the church, setting up a people, right? Uh, calling a people out. Uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob were the beginnings of that, especially Abraham, uh, as we read his story, right? And uh, he wanted them to remain pure because his, his revelation for, was for them alone at that time. Uh, because as we understand it, all other nations and all the other line of Cain, if we go back, right, were an ungodly Cain, were an ungodly line, right? Uh, they were those who were uh, dwelling afar off from God. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, we need to keep ourselves, as the Bible says here, uh, that's what it's speaking of here. Let there be no mixture in our life if we want the blessing of God, right? And I'm going to talk about a little bit about that as we go along. We heard it in the uh, Deuteronomy text there. Thou should, he, should, he had no strange gods with him, right? Which means he had no mixture with him. We cannot have the blessing of God uh, if we have mixture in our hearts of the world and entertaining the things of the world uh, with right, the things of God. It's not on. Uh, friends, you're going to see it for yourself. Multitudes do that. right? And, uh, uh, well, what are the consequences of that? Well, down the track, <laughs> it's all going to come, uh, come out, uh, friends, and not uh, be a good thing either for those who have entertained both the world and the things of God. God would have us to be sanctified and separated unto himself. So we have to keep ourselves from the world, keep to the path which God had marked out for us, right? And that's what Jacob was directed to do. Fortunately for him, he obeyed his parents, right? <laughs> which is a, a second of the commands, I think, uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, yes. Obey your parents in the Lord, right? And... Uh, if you're a young person still living under the roof of your mother and father's house, uh, that is a directive to you because the Ten Commandments still hold, right, as uh, they are spoken to us that we might inherit a blessing uh, and be kept uh, from all evil. So, perhaps a more illustrative example of this thought comes from uh, the psalmist, in the very beginning of the Psalms. Uh, uh, he's, he's laying a good foundation for us for the hope of that eternal happiness and prosperity of the soul. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Uh, first of all, uh, it comes as in as the first Psalm, actually, in the book of Psalms, the Psalms of David. And... Uh, just turning to, to it now, uh, Psalms chapter 1, and we'll see something of what we're talking about now. Psalms chapter 1. Here we are. And it starts like this, Blessed is the man. Right? Blessed is the man. Uh, happy, eternally happy, is that man 
that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Huh? Yes. Uh, you see what I mean here? That's the entertaining of mixture. Walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Listening to them. How they speak of the world and their pleasures. The pleasures of the world. And how the world... Uh, and, and how... Um, we're finding more and more now the governments of the world are controlling uh, uh, the peoples, uh, that they must uh, toe the line to the way of the world, right? But the Bible says here, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his delight, or her delight, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, or his word, doth he meditate day and night. All right. Also, if we come over to 119, we'll see a kind of repetition, but a little bit more uh, um, expansive of that. Again, it begins with this word, blessed, or eternally happy. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in in the law of the Lord, who walk in the law of the Lord, it means to say they're doers of the word and not just hearers. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. I guess we'll come back to that as we go on today. So, <clears throat> blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, his delight, friends, is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Uh, if, you're, if you have the slightest interest in the happiness and welfare and uh, security and safety of your soul, and that for all eternity, then this is that which uh, thought which uh, should consume you. Uh, to have a delight in the law of the Lord and to know and take knowledge of God and his uh, uh, perfect plan and purpose for your life. Well, as we read, this is also confirmed for us in the 119 Psalm 1 to 3. This emphasis, uh, the fact that it is not only a familiarity with the word of God, but a seeking to walk in it, uh, that... Uh, 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 attracts uh, the very rich blessing of God when we walk in that blessing, when we walk in the Lord, way of the Lord, right? There's one thing to learn and have an education in Christianity, but that doesn't make you a Christian, friends. It may make you a professing Christian, but Christians are those who walk in the footsteps of Abraham. They are doers of the word of God and not just hearers of the word of God. And that's a very important thing to keep in mind if we're young. Because you know, friends, when I was young, that was one of the one things that put me off uh, for some years, right? Having these thoughts, uh, entertain these thoughts about uh, church and church life, etc. Observing people, right? As I did. This is number one. You know, you can, you can observe people and know uh, just something about them. Are they fair dinkum about the things of God? Or, you know, are they willing to live two kinds of lives? One foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. It cannot be, friend. It cannot be. So, that for a long time put me off. Uh, you know, seeking the Lord myself because I saw such uh, uh, things in the church myself when I was young. Don't let it put you off, though. As I said last week, find your example in the Word of God. Don't look in the world because you're going to see so much mixture, friends, so much uh, 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 of, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, which is not a good example. There's not many good examples around. There's not many good men, right, who are following the Lord. And especially in these last days when iniquity shall abound, right? Many shall fall by the wayside. So uh, there is something that we have to be very diligent about, and that is in the seeking of God 
and uh, knowing that we, if we walk with him, it will attract very much the blessing, the rich blessing of God. Those also that walk in his ways must be also those that seek him with a whole heart. As we read in the, in the Psalms 119, 1 to 3, right? This then is a very real consequence of our acquaintance with him, uh, being gained from taking knowledge of him, uh, putting such into practice, and then uh, not being content simply in an outward walk or, or profession, which I talked about, but reaching out for the very author and finisher of our faith with a desire of that very personal communion with him. Friends, that is what comes, uh, you know, as we follow on to know him and more and more upon our heart desiring that. It comes out in the Psalms, which I encourage you as young people to read very much uh, because it's the experience of a young person like you. <laughs> As the Shulamite said in Song of Solomon, Oh, that I might know where to find him. <laughs> uh, and you know, that was, uh, if you read Song of Solomon, that's uh, the story of one, there's a young, young woman actually, right, who is seeking uh, after uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and to know the God of her salvation. She's not just content uh, with knowledge, right? Knowledge uh, must be converted into action and uh, the seeking of the Lord with our whole heart. So, young person or any for that matter, uh, my, my whole desire is that I might communicate to you uh, as I would to myself the very summit of all desire, the highness of it, friend. Uh, you see, that is the reason many, I believe, are content with uh, uh, that sort of dry and cold and lifeless form which you see in the church today so much. Uh, those pro pro professing uh, and have a testimony. And that is why and that is when Christianity loses its appeal, of, as I've just said, especially among the young and those who seek uh, for the high place of affection or holy love, which is the pinnacle, the summit uh, of uh, real Christianity, friends. Beautiful, holy, pure, lovely communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that is the very summit, uh, that is the very high place of Christianity uh, and uh, uh, the right place to set our affections. As the Bible says, set your affections on the things above and not on the things of this world which uh, duly shall pass away. Such that is uh, comprehended of the heart being the very loving kindness of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about now, to know that the loving kindness of the Lord and his tender mercies in that which demands our all in all and nothing else will satisfy the seeking soul but this, to know that. As we learned, you know, as we began this, uh, as we began this series, cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning uh, because I trust in you. Cause me to know the way wherein I walk for I lift up my soul to thee. Right? Uh, this is a, that's a wonderful scripture, friend, uh, that I hope will be indelibly marked in your soul right? to remember right? and keep with you and treasure up. As concerning Jacob, that is why he is held out to us in scripture as a most blessed example of, uh, uh, from the Old Testament, which we can... Uh, uh, which we can see. Uh, he is set forth as a kind of guardian of God's truth. Uh, and uh, we have that confirmed in the reading uh, of Deuteronomy um, verse 9. I might just come back there and remind myself of that one too. Deuteronomy 32, 9, uh, what it does say there. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 9, as we read before. Um, 
32 verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Meaning to say he has so much invested in the patriarchs. Firstly, Adam, Abraham. Secondly, Isaac, uh, his son. And then Jacob, the son of Isaac. Uh, uh, that is what is spoken of here. The Lord's portion is his people. Speaking of his particular and peculiar love for his people. friend. When you hear that scripture, um, what is that scripture now? Um, about God's love, honey, that um, is, 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 we find in the book of Romans. Uh, uh, it's a very um, well-known scripture. Uh, he loves the world. What, what's that scripture say? Romans 5a. Romans 5a, what does it say? But God demonstrated his love towards us while we, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, well, it's not that one, no, but uh, the one that most people understand, uh, but uh, take uh, in a wrong way. Perhaps it'll come to me as we go along. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That's in John chapter 3, verse 16. Yeah, yeah, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him might not perish but have everlasting life. Believe in him, right? Trust in him. Uh, commit your all to him. Uh, that is what I'm talking about. But many interpret that as uh, God so loved all, every one of us. Well, he does in a certain way, but in particular, he loves his people. They are the portion, mm. uh, uh, his clear the love portion. In that uh, verse 9, <clears throat> very clear. Absolutely. For the Lord's portion is his people. Yeah. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Yeah. And so I uh, pray that if you had uh, come so far with me so far, uh, let us journey on a little further and take knowledge of Jacob, huh? uh, whom God finds in a desert land, in a waste howling wilderness, as one uh, as to our previous reading, which we read in Deuteronomy. Uh, for it is there he first finds him, leads him about, instructs him, and keeps him as the very apple of his eye. Now, is that not a peculiar love? To keep one as the apple of thine eye, right? <laughs> he has such delight in him. Now, consider this. That is a great delight, friend. And that's what we call grace because a Jacob has already committed one of the... Uh, 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 variable, terrible sins of deception foisted upon his father, right? So we might say, hey, he's not a good person, is he? No, but hey, the scripture that you said before, you know, um, God sets his heart on us. Um, uh, uh, while we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners, right? Christ That's the grace of God. And yeah, and, uh, and God will not be uh, thwarted when he passes down the blessing of God, let me tell you, right? Mm. <laughs> uh, so here, um, Genesis 28, 10 and 11. And Jacob went out from Beth she Beersheba and went towards Haran in obedience to his mother and father's command. Now that's what we have in the Genesis 28. That's where we'll be taking our readings from to the, uh, this afternoon or this evening Genesis 28 and Isaac called Jacob blessed him and charged him etc we read that arise go to Paran the house of Bethuel thy mother's father and take thee a wife from there and God the almighty God bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou may be a multitude of people and so we read on in verse 11. Um, considering now that he had travelled a very long way in one day, right? A very long day. And it would have been a long day too, believe me. Uh, trudging through a waste howling wilderness as it is described in the word of God, right? The hot teeming sun. Uh, uh, upon him. No shade whatsoever, right? Uh, uh, 
but shade was found where he did alight. Um, and uh, to boot, he had all of these thoughts buzzing through his head, you know, having left his family, right? Uh, and that was his love, his family, being around the house, right? Uh, enjoying family life. And so much the more because God was present in the family, right? Uh, the father, Isaac, had the blessing of God upon him from Abraham <laughs> passed down to him. And that's another story that we could go into. But we're certainly looking here at Jacob. So, and he alighted upon a certain place, as we read in verse 11, uh, and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. He tarried there all night. Well, darkness was falling, friend. And uh, darkness, as we know, whether it be natural or spiritual, forbids us to travel further on. Especially now, spiritual darkness is what I'm talking about, which is truly comprehended in the soul. And consider, if you will, how this darkness might have been felt by Jacob up to this point. The very wrestlings of his mind, flesh and spirit in conflict. What is my future? How is it uh, that though, though um, uh, I'm blessed of my father, I'm now bereft of the comforts of my mother and father and family home. How is it I am so now seemingly a castaway, alone, desolate, afflicted, and what shall my life be? Have you, young person, ever entertained such thoughts? I believe in the world we're living in now, which is far removed from such a... Uh, a domestic and uh, life that they had in those days, pure and simple, right? Not in today's world, uh, where there are so many uh, kind of things that are uh, uh, coming upon us. Even young people, uh, we as mothers and fathers have experienced that, you know. Uh, we really do uh, know the challenges that young people face today and uh, hope is the one thing that we must grasp, hope. Uh, there is hope, friend, hope in the Lord, and it shall not and never disappoint us. But as for Jacob, these were the things that, uh, the thoughts that probably he entertained as he trudged along through that uh, desert wilderness. So my friends, is that something that you might have felt and are feeling even at this time? Well, is it not a time to tarry a little then, right? Is it not a time to turn both mind and heart heavenwards and consider who has made you, formed you, breathed the very life into your soul and that he who made you will not forsake the work of his hands, will not forsake the work of his hands uh, ever and more until he has brought you to himself, to the saving of your soul such as having a love for your soul and such a desire for the eternal welfare and happiness of your soul. Well, I don't want to read too much into the mind of Jacob more than I have, for that is the province of God. But I do want you to know that the very providence of God, his leading and guiding, which we'll talk about a little as we go on, will sometimes contradict the promise as it was here with Jacob. Right? He had the promises of God, but now he's thinking to himself, well, what are those promises now? Uh, what will my future be? Right? <laughs> it's uh, kind of dark right? and kind of foreboding. Jacob, however, it will be seen as we read on, that there is never any trouble of the soul that ever will sink such a one who has comprehended and taken to heart even a little of the very nature and character of God, which was handed down to him by Isaac, his father, and his faithful love, God's faithful love, 
which is all to be comprehended in the blessing of God and his favour, even despite our own failings, despite our own sins and runaway hearts, friends. And uh, uh, don't we as young people have those runaway hearts, huh? <laughs> well, let's take a short break now. And when we come back, uh, uh, such an unwelcome, uncompromising place ever that we might expect a divine meeting, right? Uh, and one in which also uh, uh, we were, in which we were deprived of all, even every earthly comfort. Back in a moment. trust friends to following on in the narrative of Jacob which is truly an example set forth for us and especially I believe for young people beginning their life and starting out on that journey of life right uh, it's a good thing friend to have the blessing of God with you and upon you his favor that's why I've named this uh, this series the sweet and sunny days even though there will be dark days, friends. Even in the life of Christians, there are dark days. There are mountain tops, there are valleys, but he brings you through them all, victorious in the end, if we shall stay the distance with them, as Jacob did and proved him to be the God of his salvation. Well, friends, as we read here um, in verse 11, and he lighted, Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. He lighted upon a certain place, tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillows, imagine, and lay down in that place to sleep. Friends, the place that J Jacob chose to rest could not be more lonely and un. Uh, unaccommodating, unaccommodating. I guess he travelled light. He wouldn't have taken his uh, what we call here. What does our boy take when he goes camping? His uh, his what? Camping gears. He's not his camping gear. His um, swag. Uh, swag we call it here. You know, which is a bed. Uh, but you ought to see the size of that bed that my son has when he goes camping, right? Or he he goes on a journey. It's huge, friend. It's like a little tent that he, and, and, a, and, a, and a beautiful soft mattress and maybe the pillow in there as well. But Jacob had none of that. Travelling through the wilderness, right? He had none of that. None of those comforts whatsoever. Perhaps just the clothes on his back and something of, of a bread and a, and, a, and a water that his mother had given him for the journey. So, a place most lonely and uncompromising. But it is in such a place, God, that God often works his wonders in his wisdom and providence uh, and revealing himself to us. And especially if we had beforehand had some promises of his blessing as Jacob did. And you don't have to have much, friends, to have uh, some promises of those blessings. But even so, even if you haven't been brought up in a godly family and have none of that, well, it's not so good a start, is it? But hey, let's consider the prodigal son, of which we have the parable in the New Testament. Though he had no such promises of blessing, he had some remembrances of his father's house. And in a way, we also, even if without certain promises of blessing, have such remembrances of God's mercy to us, if we will only think and consider back upon our life, right? Uh, those things coming to mind would and should turn our heart to God rather 
than we cast all hope away. The fact that we're not consumed yet. The fact that we've still got life, friends. While you've still got life, we've got hope. Many do away with their uh, life in their younger days, which is a very sad uh, testimony of this kind of world that we're living in and its state today. Because, friends, God's word has largely disappeared from men's hearts and there is only few in this world, a remnant which are in which the word of God is preserved, the hope of ages, right? And that hope, I pray that I might be able to translate to you and convey to you, young person, walking in this life today, right? And the Bible says here, as he uh, lay down to sleep, he dreamed. The word tells us here. Now, verse 12 of Deuteronomy 28. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth. The top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. Now such a dream we should not expect from one whose mind and heart was tossed and turned in so many ways as it was leading up to this. For so in such a situation of tiredness our dream would be more, I suppose, confused and chaotic. Huh? You know, <laughs> if you've walked the distance that he had in a waste howling wilderness, burdened with such thoughts as your future, your life, what shall it be? Right? And where you'd come from and the loss of family so, uh, so much. Right? Your dreams, you would expect, would not be such as they were with Jacob. But hey, God has a plan for him, and he has a plan for you also. But not this dream uh, that he would have anything like a chaotic and, uh, and a confused dream. For as it is written in the first of Hebrews, God in sundry times and in divers manners, meaning by dreams and visions, spoke to the forefathers by the prophets, right? Meaning to say, in those days of the Old Testament, if you don't mind me speaking about this a little and tarrying a little upon this, uh, this is the way that God spoke to those in the Old Testament, right? Uh, through in divers manners, meaning by dreams and visions, right? But understand this, in these last days, following the first advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, God speaks to us by Christ himself from heaven and, by the four, and through the forefathers and by the prophets recorded for us in the word of God. As the word has said, but have in these last days spoken to us by his son. So we don't denote that. Well, many in these days do still place great store on dreams, when as it seems to me now that God only speaks to us by his Son, and of course through the only recorded divine record of his apostles, whom he, whom he revealed himself more intimately, and so we should take all the more time to study these, more than spend time uh, unravelling the often confused state of a restless night, friend. And those things uh, uh, that uh, we might uh, think uh, speaks to us of uh, happiness, etc. You're only going to find that, friend, in the Word of God, in no other thing. Let me tell you, no other thing, no other philosophy, uh, idol worship, any other than the God of truth uh, is able to speak such things to us so intimately, even the love of our soul, right? And how his son came to give his life, his very uh, life for sinners, right? But that's another in the things that we might uh, meditate as we go along. So now, what we may be asking uh, 
was the dream that Jacob dreamed. What was it? Well, for one thing, it must have been of a spiritual nature and a confirmation uh, of, to Jacob of that which Isaac, his father, had already impressed upon his mind, right? And secondly, it was so impressed upon the writer of the very Spirit of God to write and record it here for the benefit of all generations to come. That is why I say it's so necessary and needful for us to get uh, an understanding in the Old Testament of the originals of the faith, friend. Uh, that we know uh, these were handed down to both Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and other of the forefathers who were entrusted with that truth and continued uh, to convey it to their descendants as well. So in verse 12 and 13, and he dreamed a dream, and so we read on, first of all, of a ladder, which one would think and assume we climb up. Uh, but lo, how lofty and high is this ladder, right? Reaching from earth to heaven and spanning such a distance which no man could comprehend. Yes, friends. So it's a, a picture of a ladder. Yes, we know what ladder's for, climbing up and getting on the roof of your house and fixing the gutters, what our God did sometimes, right? <laughs> and uh, But no, this is some ladder, huh? Reaching from uh, earth to heaven, right? And behold, such as the angels of hosts, uh, the angel, angelic of God, ascending and descending upon it. Well, this be the first thing that we observe, and that which no doubt Jacob observed, that there is a great deal of activity, a great deal of uh, 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 converse, you know, uh, uh, if you like in the unseen world, in the spiritual world. Great deal of communication. Angels ascending, angels descending. Right? What, what do we think of that? What do we think of that when we see that? Well, this is the ordered world of God in which uh, the counsel of God, uh, counsels of God are affected in the present world and all the affairs of this habitable world are known to God. In other words, he doth order all things in this present world according to his good will and pleasure. And friends, he does that with messengers as well as his angelic host also uh, bringing about the works of providence in those whom he has called to himself. And uh, friends, as we observe this, and probably as Jacob would have observed this, uh, it would have dispelled such thoughts to him that God himself is a disinterested God, if indeed we believe him to be a God at all, you know? <laughs> what kind of effect would it have upon ourselves? Well, ever so comfortable to thinking souls. <laughs> and that's why I say thinking souls. Because, you know, most people read the Word of God, but they don't think about it. They don't personalize it, friend. They just read it like a newspaper, as if it's some information and education about Christianity. But go further, friends, because this is recorded for you to take on board personally, right? And without that, you shall not have the benefit of it, unless you personalize those things that are written for us in the Word of God. So, what effect would that have on seeing this vision in this dream, right? Well, first thing, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this world. Because aloneness is a terrible thing, right? Being solitary-like and thinking that nobody else knows your problems, nobody else knows your feelings, nobody else uh, knows the troubles that you have inwardly and you don't want to express them either because you know that people, they laugh at you. Yes, <coughs> So, we're alone in the world, right? But we take knowledge from this, that we are not alone in the world, right? Even though we are separated from God by sins, 
so much, right? Uh, and there is a certain amount of darkness in that. Yet the great God of heaven and earth is directing all matters and all things after the counsel of his own good will and pleasure, and more especially in the affairs of the souls which he has made and is divinely connected with. So, as we read uh, with understanding, and I encourage you to read this uh, Psalm 139, because it speaks so much of these most comfortable and precious thoughts and the very blessed effects they have upon those who would desire to know more of the heavenly life and God's part with us. That's Psalm 139. Take that down and note it, because that will put you in mind of, as, as the psalmist says, these precious thoughts, most precious to me, uh, most comforting thoughts, uh, uh, that God is with us right? and, and has not, uh, is not a God who has uh, just uh, looking down from heaven, as it were, disinterested. But of this latter now, there must be more to speak of. Uh, its significance, its type, right? It typifies the Lord Jesus Christ, who has accomplished this, uh, uh, this work of mediation between God and man. We call Jesus Christ, the Son of God, a mediator between God and man. I mean, I mean to say a bridge, right? A bridge, in this case, a ladder. Right? In, in which all those who would come to God through Christ have a most blessed way and the only way to heaven, which Jacob in verse 17 describes as the very gate of heaven. So we read that in the verses uh, 13 uh, and uh, 13 through to 16. And behold... The Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac, the land upon where thou liest to thee, I will give it into thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and they shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places where thou goest, and will bring thee again to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to you. And ja Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. The Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Well, friends, here is a beginning of those sweet and sunny days although not without trouble, which we shall uh, observe reading further, uh, but most surely in the discovery of God. As such, uh, or as such a way and uh, in such a place uh, uh, which would lighten our very heart, even so as it was Jacob, way down as it was in the wilderness of of this world. Um, I just want to read this as closing our, our message tonight in the verses uh, uh, 5 to 8 of Psalms 34. And incidentally, these are, uh, are words which we are going through in the water of the brook right at this very moment, Frank. Uh, uh, so if you look back, you might see some expansion of that word. Psalms 34. And uh, here we are. Psalms 34. So water from the brook will be um, following hard after this one, after this message. Trust you'll enjoy. Uh, you will join us for that one as well. Psalms 34. Here we are. <coughs> And uh, from verse 5 to 8, we're reading. This in particular, this verse, <laughs> I think it uh, so much uh, 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 
so much is to do with Jacob. It says here, they looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed, right? They looked unto him and were lightened, as if the sun had shone upon them, right? When God speaks, he shines into the heart to give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That is the truth. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Now I'm thinking now of this poor man. Who was that? Jacob uh, was indeed, as he walked along in that wilderness, I'm sure, he was uh, uh, a crying unto the Lord. He would have a prayer based on the very blessings of God which he had heard from the mouth of his father Isaac, who had previously heard these from Abraham, who was entrusted with that blessing, right? Who was entrusted with that covenant. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And this verse, friends, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him, and delivers them. Hey, how about that, huh? In camps round about them that fear him, that uh, reverence, respect him, and hold him high in such high esteem and honour as we should, as created by the hand of God, and uh, are to live for his glory, praise and honour. The angel of the Lord in camps round about them that fear him, and he delivers them. I might go on to verse 8. O oh, taste and see then that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. And I guess that that would be uh, such as uh, a wonderful thing for Jacob in this situation. And as he had uh, uh, discovered some discoveries of God uh, through this dream, which we will enlarge upon uh, next time. So I want you to join us again next time. Uh, I want you uh, for further discoveries of God in his ways and working, his glorious spirit and how he works in us, friends, for his own good will and good pleasure to do us good. Yeah, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that puts his trust in him. Well, we're going to see you again next week, I trust, and following on with this delightful and most blessed and most profitable uh, narrative of Jacob. Why don't you join us again next Sunday? But following on now, water from the brook in just a moment. We'll take a short break and we'll be back in just a short while. Stay with us. Well, thank you so much. We are very much happy to receive your comments there online. And... Uh, <laughs> Certainly, the the word of God will bless your heart tonight. Yeah. Yes, praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, that's very much so, friends. So we, uh, uh, it thrills my heart reading. Uh, and I, if you're a young person, I, I believe uh, uh, you, you you love uh, stories with good endings, don't you? Huh? <laughs> uh, this is a storybook of good endings. Huh? Uh, they who endured to the end, uh, they're already blessed in heaven, friend. Uh, and the only way that you're going to get there is through Jesus Christ our Lord and having taken knowledge of him yeah. because he is the way, the truth, and the very life of your soul. So we encourage you to um, go back and uh, replay again this message and, yeah. uh, and share it to everyone. Amen. God bless. God bless for now. See you soon.